This episode of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by Audible. Coming up, we check in once again to see what else is on our radar this week. The Totally Rad Show. are back in On My Radar. It's sort of our time to check in on things that may not fit under the guise of the show or something that we just happened to miss. Um, so I want to talk to you guys, see what's going on around on your radars as they were. Uh, I'll start with Jeff. <laughs> the old swarmy news. Yeah. So Jeff, what's... Uh, oh, but were you expecting Dan? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, well, I'm excited to tell you what's on my radar. You guys know mm -hmm. that I am a big board game fan. Correct. Uh, there is a board game documentary mm -hmm. that was a grassroots kickstarter project that mm -hmm. actually got made. It's called Going Cardboard. Ah, Going Cardboard. <laughs> yes. And it's, uh, it's really wonderful. It's a very handmade. It feels very uh, of the community, for the community. The best thing about it is that you, I got to see, I mean, I've been fans of a lot of these... Um, Creators. Cre board game authors, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and you get to see them because they interview almost everybody, like Friedman Frieza. I had no idea he's like a rock star with green hair, young guy. I, I just assumed he was... Uh, you know, doer and old and, you know, smoked a pipe because his games are all so smart. Um, and, I mean, literally everybody that you could imagine, and they have some really cool people from the community, one of my favorite guys, Tom Vassell from the um, the podcast Dice Tower, which I really like. Uh, and and it shows a lot of facets of the, uh, of the hobby. Hmm. My only criticism with it is it, you know, we, we raved about the Comic-Con documentary recently, and yep. obviously that had a lot more money behind it and, right. and, and stuff, and they were able to do more with it. But uh, the, I think the smart thing that Spurlock did with that is that it really made it about individual people and stories, and you get to see this event through the prism of those people. And I think yeah. that because I, I feel like Going Carver was so, so wanted to cover the entire spectrum of what board games were, that it never really latched onto one specific thing, and it sort of gets into the the digital revolution of uh, iPad versions of board games, and it's talking about you know uh, conventions, and, and it, it you know it, it's going to Gen Con, and and it's go, it's talking about um, the the huge one over in uh, Essen, uh, so it's and a little all, all over it, the place. it's a little all over the place. Yeah. It's a little unfocused. It's it's not exactly the the home run that I really wanted, but it certainly is fun if you're curious about what board games are about, what designer board games are. It's a great way in. It, you know, it doesn't. It has a little of that, like, oh, every, these people with huge collections. It has has a little bit of yeah. just average people playing. It doesn't. Where can you see it? Uh, you can get it online, and I okay. think um, I, I think Amazon carries it. Uh, okay. But it, if you search for it, you can figure out ways to get it. it it's not expensive, and it actually comes with a little board game that yeah, was designed specifically for. I mean, Renner Kinesia is is interviewed in this. Um, it, it, all, everybody, uh, That's even. Cool. The designer of uh, Settlers of Catan, mm -hmm. who, who is you never see in anything. It's it's really cool, and hmm. uh, I highly recommend it. That's yeah. awesome. Daniel Trachtenberg, what did Jeff just say? Didn't see that coming. Hey, um, <laughs> uh, Klaus Tuber. I couldn't remember his name. Uh, Klaus, Klaus Tuber. Tuber. I'm gonna chat about a sequel to a game that I uh, really like called Prototype. Oh. Uh, you did. You loved oh. it. The sequel is called. Prototype. Aptly, prototype 2. Ooh. Uh, the prototyping? It's go another good one. Prototyping. Uh, it's not <clears throat> much different than the OG is that a good prototype. Thing? It is in the sense that, I mean, there's, I probably, you could buy either one and have a very similar experience. There are some improvements and some disprovements. Uh, oh. I thought there was a whole bunch of new stuff from what I saw at I didn't, I didn't experience much new. I mean, here, here's the thing. The best aspect of prototype is the traversal is jump I mean I, I think it really um, puts a smack down on crackdown what Whoa. Um, and uh, just Whoa. In it, it has the same kind of feeling when you leap up in there but you can also glide oh, and you can level that as you go mm. crackdown or whatever um, and it's just so much fun to just 
get from one end of the city to the other. That's the most fun that you have in this game. Yeah. The second most fun I have in this game, not playing the story missions, is there's like these mini game things where you have to just kill as many people as possible. Or my favorite uh, in the first game was get like there were hoops all over the city that you have to, rings that you have to go through. Mm. Here it's like you pick up these packages. Um, they're like timed events. You have to beat your time, where you have to like hit a target from the build from the sky, top skyscraper down below. So it's using the the fun traversal mechanic, capitalizing on the fun of the traversal mechanic, right. as opposed to just an open world game. Yeah, that stuff is so much fun. And what they do smartly in this is instead of having to get to those games throughout the city, now you can just hit a menu and you can play them at any time. Hmm. And they're interestingly. It's on Radnet, their radical entertainment, Radnet, and they're episodically, throughout should, the months... We should sue them. Yeah. <laughs> throughout the months, they, they give you more of these games. Right. So Interesting. That's almost like free downloadable content. Hmm. But when I, when I saw it uh, at various events, yes. it, it looked a lot like uh, Spawn the game. But the or, first game has all those abilities. I mean, Venom there might be the different game. abilities yeah. in the first game, but the first game still had claw hand and <laughs> tentacle weapon. And, yeah. and so but you, you do more crazier stuff now? It's, yeah, it's probably a little bit crazier from my memory of the first one. It probably is ramped up, but it's still pretty much the same thing. Interesting. Um, but the games are not, those things that I like were not as good as they were in the first one. They're different and they're more accessible, but they're not as good. Sounds like you're less enthusiastic because you were such a huge fan of yeah, the first one. Yeah, well, it waned. And the first one, you know, you played enough and like, because the st there's not beyond the, st there's not, the story isn't wonderful. Mm -hmm. So that once you get your fill of that mechanic, you, you kind of have it. But uh, and it's fun, man. I mean, I putting the sensation that it gives you, hmm. it's better than any of the... Hook games that I love. I mean, it really is the he best hook of it. Games. But, I love hook games. Um, but interesting. It's, it's Prototype on. two. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a strong game. It's a strong game. So I was a huge fan of a TV show called um, Crossing Over with John Edwards. You were, you were? huge fan. <laughs> Crossing Over with John Edwards. Yeah. I uh, sit sort I've of squarely. I've become a psychic. I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I sit sort of squarely between the skeptic and the full-on believer of supernatural things. A skep believer. A skep believer. <laughs> uh, just a squitch of a or a squatch of a squatch believer. Uh, but um, a bileptic. A bileptic. Uh, so I kind of sit between. So I, I love seeing things where. My, my philosophy on the afterlife is very simple and optimistic, which is I will never know until I die, either pro or con, if there is an afterlife and ghosts and all that crazy stuff. That means I have to make a mental choice to believe in either one. It seems like I would be a happier person going through life believing that there is something after I die. So why wouldn't I do that? So that's kind of where I sit skeptically wise. Mm -hmm. uh, and crossing over with John Edwards was amazing because here's this guy who is, is a psychic or purports to be a psychic. And to be honest, I don't care if it's a trick. It was fun watching because it was emotional. People got through a lot of uh, stuff that they held on to. In TLC, on TLC, there is a new show that I have come to love called The Long Porters. Island Medium. <laughs> the what? The Long Island Medium. I sounds like I will love it. You, Dan? <laughs> You should it's watch like, it. Because it's like a funny, like, it is literally, weird, like, hey, what's going on? We got to whatever. Oh, you're going to die soon. It is what's this, going? it literally <laughs> is this woman yeah. who is a medium. It's like a Housewives of New York City kind of, like, It's a maid, but it's even more Jersey. sort of authentic because yeah. it's not like she's just a woman who lives in Long Island with a daughter and a husband and they have I a dog. and it. yeah. It's amazing. And she does do readings throughout the shows, but the best is when she's out in the world, like, her dog got sick and she took her to the vet, took him to the vet. And so you're kind of doing the sort of like reality TV show of this couple that's very stereotypically, you know, Long Island Italians. Love it. And then she's waiting to go and all of a sudden she starts like r giving this woman who's working the desk a sort of reading because that's just what happened. Amazing. And I've realized I'm a sucker for, and this, you may be this way as well. Jeff always cries just in general. Right. But I have figured out that I, no matter why people are upset, if other people are like crying or emotional, I become emotional, right? Yeah. So it's not, it doesn't have to be a situation in which it is emotional for me. Right. It's just seeing I don't think somebody. I'm that way, but yeah. Well, Top Chef, remember? 
Remember when we cried well, no, together? Of the well, just wait. Just wait. Just, wait. Took. just well, don't spoil wait. it. I'm going to watch the show 100%. Already, it's already TV. It's already TV. So, so season two, I psychically so so season two uh, has just ended. They've, I think, oh. picked up a season three. But so it's on marathon oh, time. Okay. Marathon time! So <laughs> check it out. Probably on uh, I think she probably could have seen it coming that she was getting a second season. <laughs> oh, she says. Anyway, she says. I'm glad. I'm really glad you brought up television because I meant to say that you know, I had been planning to do On My Radar, when we were talking about, are we gonna do On My Radar soon? I'd been planning to do an On My Radar about a TV show myself. I'd been so excited to tell you guys about it, Best Friends Forever. Oh, I Except love that it, it yeah. just got it's yanked. Canceled. Yeah, I, got I love that show. It's yeah, so it's well written. Yeah. Keith, uh, shot that yeah, some of it. Operates it. Yeah. Yanked. Yeah, Dude, yeah. We didn't even get to see the last two episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Crank yanked. So good. The guy on that show. Squatched. Is, um, <laughs> he got squashed. Totally squashed. <laughs> I, mean, I great. watched it and, and they it's squashed all, it. It's yeah. all written by those two yeah, I know. women, improvisers. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's I would so say watch it. Wonderfully well written and a tone yeah. that other shows don't have, but yeah. it's gone and you can't. Hi, oh. hi, JPM. All right, everybody, be sure to stick around. We're going to be answering one of your Twitter questions right after this. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Jeff Kanata. Audible.com, the place to listen to audiobooks. You have over a hundred thousand titles across. It have? It have, it have a hundred. You, you gonna get it. Uh, you can put them in your iPod or MP3 player. They have a, literally any kind of book mm -hmm. you can possibly fathom. Stuff that'll educate you, stuff mm -hmm. that'll entertain you, stuff that'll tell you about real stuff, fake stuff, classic science fiction, st it, everything across the board. Nice. You can go to audiblepodcast.com slash totally rad and you can get a free audiobook to download of Psh. your choice when free. you sign up. That's awesome. I know you listened to The Hunger Games. I did, I did. Uh, I love listening to audiobooks. I could go on and on and on about them. But why take my word for it? Get a free one, audiblepodcast.com slash totally rad. Correct. Check her out. Free is the best amount of money. It really is. Uh, except hey, for unless you're negative five hundred, that gives you money. You're trying to make money. Th yes. Send free. Background. Send us a background. Send Fans us a background. What the hell? Why not? It yeah. would be great to have your stuff on our uh, backsides. Sure. Don't miss tomorrow when we play Secret Identity. Today's Twitter question sent to us with the hashtag TRSQ is sent in by James M. Gregory at I am Solo Three. To steal a page out of James Lipton's book, what is your favorite curse word? Hmm. This is interesting. Mine would be Oh Jesus. my god. What is that is horrible. What? <laughs> oh my god. I think that's illegal in a lot of states. I can't. I'm worried that we're going to be killed by people for you saying that. I can't beat that. that uh, my <laughs> I can't possibly top that. You can't, but mine's an easy one. Well, I'll just say. What's well, a long one? <laughs> but it's good, especially when you yell it at a woman. Well, it's no, it's no. Oh, oh, damn, damn, stop don't it. say that. No, don't. We oh, 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 point. It's point. It's disgusting. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, James M. Gregory. Don't you. Oh, don't play now. <laughs>